I just wanted to do a brief introduction to this video. Um, I mean, I, I don't think that people in the United States fathom the magnitude of what's been taking place around the world. I mean, we've got one million dead Ukrainians, uh, you know, probably 200,000 dead Russians. Uh, you, you look over to uh, Israel. I mean, I, I would say we're up to 600, 700,000 dead Palestinians uh, with the bombing campaign. We've got the United States providing all the munitions, uh, 2,000 pound bombs. Uh, we've got Lebanon with a million displaced people, uh, Russian uh, up to well, across Syria into Turkey. Uh, who knows how that's going to go? Uh, you know, we are very uh, sheltered at this point in the United States from a lot of what this is going on. But at the same time, we've got hundreds of thousands of United States citizens dying from fentanyl uh, at the Democrat hand. Uh, we've got child trafficking on a scale that's unprecedented. We've got human trafficking that's on a scale that's un unprecedented throughout the world. Uh, I mean, I can't even imagine how uh, uh, the American people, we've got, uh, good Lord, 20 million illegal immigrants that have been filtered into the United States at the hand of Alejandro Mayorkas, the greatest evil criminal in the, in the probably history of the world. We've got Fachi the greatest uh, uh, humanitarian criminal in the world that uh, perpetrated a virus that killed millions of people around the world and nobody seems to be getting punished. I just want to send out this appeal to you that uh, obviously you can't, now that we've seen what happens when, when a major crisis happens to the United States, I mean, I've been doing videos on Hurricane Helene and the people that are suffering miserably. Uh, and, I, and I talked about how we need to get backpackers up there to help them out as best we can. My appeal to you is no longer watch the NFL or these fascist organizations. You need to go out and help your fellow Americans and that's my message to you. Peace out. Stay free. What do you think of that view, huh? Isn't that beautiful? All right, let's whip on around here and get the... Uh... All right, let's get the news stories that I missed uh, in my dialogue on the way to my uh, watering hole here. Uh, this is a fun story <laughs> from Peter Sweden. The EU fined Hungary two, 200 million euro for uh, refusing to open their borders. So Hungary says they will send asylum seekers on buses to Brussels if the EU continues to harass them. Well, who do you think is right, <laughs> Hungary or the EU? <laughs> Boy, he took one from DeSantis, didn't he? Uh, we never did send any more to Martha's Vineyard, but I thought we should have, you know. I don't understand why he didn't do it. This is uh, Elon Musk. If you didn't believe me in a previous video, California passed a law last week that made it illegal to ask for ID in elections. Literally impossible to prove fraud there now. And, of course, I got the, the picture up above. Unbelievable. So there is a video here. Let's see. Nope, no, it's not a, not a video. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, priorities of the Biden-Harris administration equals American people's last. <laughs> Douglas McGregor, today America sent $157 million to Lebanon. I was talking about this earlier. And $2 million to South Carolina. This is unacceptable. <laughs> Not to a Democrat, Doug. To a Democrat, this makes perfect sense. We could take care of the people in Lebanon, but the United States people... By the way, I, I forgot to tell you... Asheville is a Democrat town. And so somebody pointed out, they said, well, Democrats eat their own. Think about it. Maui, 
was a Democrat town. <laughs> now, unfortunately, the town in Ohio. So it seems like the Democrats don't care as long as they're Americans and they're killing them, whether they're Democrats or Republicans. The Democrats will they'll take them out. So uh, let's see. Uh, uh, this is uh, I'll, I might finish up with this. All those videos gotten pretty long. It's a video by Glenn Beck. All right, so let's get to uh, our country, our choice. Breaking: George Soros to buy over 200 radio station week, weeks before the election, and manages to bypass the FCC review process. Now, why do you think George Soros is buying <laughs> 200 radio stations? Kamala Harris. You know, he's a big, big, uh, big supporter of Democrats. Uh, let's see, Laura Loomer. Yeah, we already talked about this. This is about the trucks being turned around. I'll put, yeah, I'll put that back in the video. George Galloway, coming your way, Europe. Uh, Turkey, c concerning for Turkey, large numbers of Syrians reportedly fled to, uh, Lebanon into Syria and now trying to reach Turkish controlled areas in northern Syria which are already are totally packed so when you bomb well let's see how many how many Lebanese has Israel killed right now I, I think we're upwards of about uh, I want to say 5,000 but I bet it's a lot more than that I bet they've killed about 10,000 civilians in, in Lebanon and you know everybody keeps saying 40,000 in Palestine no way it's at least 700,000 dead uh, civilians in, in Lebanon. And, uh, and I, I, that was another story I wanted to get on to. Everybody keeps saying that Iran was unprovoked. Yeah, how many times have you heard that? First, they bombed the, um, the, the, um, the embassy in Syria and uh, killed a couple of uh, Iranian uh, leaders there. By the way, that's, that's, a, that's a war crime. You're not allowed to bomb uh, embassies. So then they bombed, or the consulate, I, I don't believe it was, the, the embassy building was still standing, but it was part of the same complex. Uh, then they, uh, they, uh, they killed that dude, I'll get his name up above, in, uh, in Tehran, uh, murdered him, uh, so they took him out. Then they, uh, well, of course, they continued to bomb uh, Gaza, and of course they were bombing you know, the hell out of uh, Lebanon, so that was provocation right there. But then when they took out the leader of Hezbollah, along with some Iranian officers, that was another provocation. <laughs> I mean, how, many, how many provocations do you need? And, and all, this, all Iran did was send enough missiles in to damage some air bases and killed one Palestinian in, in Israel. So uh, when you hear all that crap unprovoked, it's kind of like the Ukraine war was unprovoked. All right. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, this is this is really good, and I, I put a comment on this. Two years ago, my then uh, 40k follower account was still banned for allegedly uh, spreading dangerous medical misinformation about vitamin D and the Bill Gates Foundation. Yet this information turned out to be true, and I think that I, I can get away with saying that. I, by the way, I had to edit the video, so there's another version of this video on Rumble because I got to talking about medical stuff and that's that's illegal on uh, on YouTube but I think we all know that vitamin D is good for us and I don't think uh, even YouTube can argue with that right uh, and so and, and of course I don't know what he said about the Bill Gates Foundation but I don't think it's illegal to diss them on YouTube so it's uh, but you got to be super careful these days uh, that's why I don't like YouTube and I, I keep encouraging you to go to rumble uh, or X, you can follow me at that cybersec guy on X. Uh, so today I reached the 900k milestone, and this still feels surreal to me, but I am endlessly grateful for the opportunity to reach so many people with my opinions. For those who don't know me, I advocate only for our health and, and locking Fauci up. I'm all for that. <laughs> In fact, I said he should face an international tribunal. Uh, with a death sentence uh, looming on the horizon uh, for being a uh, uh, for well, uh, humanitarian uh, terror, terror. Uh, but anyway, I, and so I wanted to read his list, and we'll finish the video right here. Uh, I oppose globalism, especially uh, the WEF. I despise liars and deceivers, such as the uh, Car 
K R A S S E S Karasi Karasi Stein Sisters. Support absolute free speech. You, I was just talking about that, uh, the portion that I didn't have to cut out, um, and uh, I and I'm all for that. I'm just saying these because I agree with. This is me. Okay, he's he's basically saying the same thing that, that I would tell you. Uh, everything should be allowed to be said. View taxes as theft and favor minimal reduced governments. I'm all for a 10% flat tax. You know, you have to have some sort of functioning central uh, um, body in, in any society, okay? And that, and that church, the church, I mean, the church takes 10%. So really that would be 20% out of everybody's uh, salary that you should... And obviously, if you don't want to give to the church, you just pay your 10 percent in taxes. And that way, government and, and, and by the way, and I have a, a law that the government can't spend more than that 10 percent that they take in. So that would be uh, something I'd be all for. Oppose woke culture, which ties to convince us that men can become pregnant and that there are no more than two genders <laughs> or that there are more than two genders. Uh, and don't forget that women can become men. Uh, you didn't put that one in there, Simon. Uh, anyway, um, uh, consider climate change science as uh, pseudo scientific as as ver ver virally. virally. I, I, <laughs> these are big words, Simon. Gosh dang it! I just uh, I, I you know I think climate change. Uh, you know I don't want to say it on YouTube, but you know I, I don't have a good opinion of, of people that say it because the Earth has gone through many different climate changes in, in, in the history of the Earth. And, and somebody pointed out, you know, that carbon dioxide, plants love carbon dioxide. So the more carbon dioxide, the better off the plants are going to be. Look at the dinosaur here. Carbon dioxide, you know, millions of years ago, carbon dioxide levels were huge. And look at how green the planet was. I mean, you know, if you believe the, the, the portrayals that our scientists have put together, I mean, it was just a green ball back then. Uh, anyway, because the plants were all flourishing. All right. Fight against mass, or fight against mass immigration policies that erode national sovereignty. Well, you know my opinion on illegal immigration. Uh, of course, you know Democrats love illegal immigration. They 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 would they would just assume all Americans be dead <laughs> and, and bring in everybody from the rest of the world and uh, and repopulate the United States. That's a Democrat. Uh, defend the right to self-sufficiency and independence from government control. Believe in personal responsibility, and the cornerstone is the cor as the cornerstone of a free society. Onward to a million. Thank you, fellow warriors. Well, Simon, I got a thousand. <laughs> so I guess I'm a little bit behind you, guys. I just love making these videos. It's fun. I hate editing them. Oh God, I can't. I, when I get home. I wish I didn't have to be so guarded in what I can say on YouTube, and that's why, you know, nobody should be, I mean, obviously you have to post on YouTube, it's the, I mean, even I watch a lot of YouTube, and, and but there's been some good people that have been bumped off of YouTube here recently, and, uh, and, and a lot of channels that I like to watch, like the Economic Ninja and, and Johnny Bravo, they, there's a lot that they can't say on YouTube, and so, you know, and I wish they had a Rumble channel. All right. Peace out. Stay free. No, there's another factor I wanted you to consider about what's taking place with Hurricane Helena and the reason why I don't think the Democrats want to give a response is, uh, as someone pointed out, Asheville, North Carolina, that's mostly Democrat, but uh, the rest of those whole areas is pretty much all Republican. And uh, DeSantis was pointing out, you know, here in Florida, you know, we, we passed uh, laws and regulation because it was right around uh, voting time that uh, they made it uh, so that people that had been displaced still got to vote. And he was saying, look, in these states, South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, well, North Carolina's not going to do it because it's Democrat governor. He says, you know, he hasn't heard anything about them making accommodations so that those people can vote. And of course, you know why? Because they're they're dirt, dirt scraping Republicans. They're the uh, Neanderthals, right? I mean, no no Democrat wants a Republican to be able to vote. That's how malicious they are. I'm just saying. Another topic I wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, I always try to give you some tips 
I don't know, a lot of people like to make videos. You know, and I keep trying to improve my videos. So I bought, I told everybody I was going to try to improve my lighting. And so I bought these lights, and they were pretty cheap, man. I was surprised. That's why I went ahead and did it. It was only like, uh, I want to say 30 bucks or so. And uh, so I get the lights, and I put them together, you know, and everything. I said, well, where's the damn, you know, power cord? Because it just came with a, um, a USB connection. And then it says, you know, so I'm reading the instructions, and it says plug into your power bank. I said, well, <laughs> nobody said anything about a power bank. So I said, well, damn, now i got to go buy a power bank. Well, not necessarily, but the thing is the cords are so short. You know, you, you can you know, use one of those adapters to put it on the USB, just like with your phone, and then plug it into the wall, which is what I'm doing right now. But I can't, you know, that really limits what I can do with the lights. So I started looking into power banks, and I found one. And uh, we're going to do a, a review of that. But there's a guy, well, actually, I'll just put a link uh, in the video to the guy. He did a review of this power bank, and, I mean, it was an outstanding review. And uh, it's the Cat Daddy. So, anyway, that's just something to think about if you ever want to buy lighting for your videos. You know, as I hike along here, I might as well get some scenery pics. But, uh, you know, one thing that came to my mind as I'm hiking in... And people have pointed this out. You realize North Carolina, I mean, I trained at Fort Bragg. That's only a stone's throw away from the mountains. And they've got all kinds of helicopters all over that base. And to the best of my knowledge, not one of those helicopters has been scrambled to help the people in North Carolina. I mean, I'm, that infuriates the hell out of me. Now, you could say, well, that's because Biden is... A, an old meat puppet <laughs> doesn't, doesn't know what's going on in the world, which is, yeah, that's true. But the, the, the people that really got me pissed off is the generals at the Pentagon. Now, I, I guarantee you if the Pentagon or generals went in en masse to Biden or the Democrats, I don't care what the political leaders say, they would say, look, you know, we've got the equipment, we've got everything we need to go help those people. You know, we, we understand that we need your order, but we are recommending that uh, you give the order for us to, to go in and help them. And I dare say that even even Biden uh, uh, or Kamala, whoever's in charge, or Blinken, I don't know, Sullivan, <laughs> I mean, it could, could be any of them that's in charge of the federal government, right? But anyway, whoever's in charge, I would imagine they would bow down and say, yeah, go ahead and send the helicopters. But that's how spineless... Your military command is that's how it's politically correct they want to be these aren't generals they're politicians that's what we have in the military we don't have military people anymore these spineless bastards i guarantee you that any recruit out of boot camp could outrun a general in fact a general probably couldn't make it one mile jogging and with our current generals they're just soft little pussies pardon my french Anyway, that's just my opinion of our command structure in the military. You know, as I'm hiking along, I wanted to contrast Florida with a Democrat governor like this that exists in North Carolina. Now, you know my opinion of Democrats. I think they're all demonic or satanic or whatever, but they have a Democrat governor in North Carolina. Now, what did we do in Florida? Well, when the longshoreman strike was coming, DeSantis had a plan put together, and we were going to send in the National Guard to keep the ports open here in Florida. Okay? We also had a plan when we knew the hurricane. Well, actually, we've, had, we've already always have a plan for hurricanes. But we knew when that hurricane was coming that, uh, you know, we have all of our supplies staged and ready to go. So the day after the hurricane, Duke Energy, the corporations, they're in partnership with, the, with our uh, state government, DeSantis, because we're Republicans. And we had everything ready to go. I dare say that nobody in Florida starved to death as a result of that hurricane. And also, immediately, Duke Energy went to work to get the power back on. Uh, so we would have kept our port open if the longshoremen had continued with the strike. 
you know, I told you that the, the mafia Democrats leaned on those union bosses and told them they were going to break their arms uh, for that strike in a previous video, if you don't understand that. That's why the, uh, the strike didn't take place. But anyway, I just, I'm just contrasting that. So up in North Carolina, no plan, none, zero, zip for the, uh, for the hurricane. No plan, zip. I think you, North Carolina might have, or South Carolina, I know that these states have a ports, don't they? I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a longshoreman. <laughs> I couldn't tell you where all the ports are. But I, no plan whatsoever. Well, especially North Carolina, because that's a Democrat governor. I think South Carolina might have a Republican governor. I don't even know. I tell you what, South Carolina, Republican or Democrat, is one messed up state. <laughs> I mean, my God, the people that they elect there. Uh, th those hicks in South Carolina are not too bright. All right, man. But I just want, wanted to point that out to you because uh, we have, you know, our National Guard was right there, right there, day after the hurricane, once it was gone, helping those people in the panhandle uh, that their houses had been flooded and everything. So we, I tell you what, we, we always bounce back. And that's why we were able to send, we sent our National Guard to North Carolina. Did you know that? Right now, Florida, we've flown in pallets of food. You know, so where's the North Carolina National Guard? <laughs> Florida's there taking care of North Carolina. Oh, my God, it just never ends, does it? It's a crazy world. That's why I call it watching the world burn. All right, I wanted to get this view for you. Talk about one more thing, comparing Florida to other states. Check it out. Anyway, when was the last time you heard of a huge fire in Florida? Huh? Compare that to California, a Democrat state. Every damn year, all of California burns down because they don't know a damn thing about fire management, or they don't care. I don't think Newsom gives a crap about the people of California. I don't understand why anybody votes Democrat. Somebody please, I keep saying leave a comment. Somebody explain to me why Democrats vote Democrat. They vote against their own self-interest. I mean, every time a house burns down, I hope it's a Democrat house in California. Because that's what they voted for. Just saying. Wanted to get that nature shot for you. Wanted to get this on the video. <clears throat> I guarantee you there's only a handful of people in all of Florida who've ever seen this. Takes a bit of work to get back here because it's this is this is off trail. But uh, anyway, this used to be a service road, I believe. But uh, and it seems like they kind of cut it. I don't understand, but I I don't know. But uh, I've tried walking that, and it just narrows down, and you can't go very far uh, once you go over the stream. Anyway, I just want to talk about Trump for just a second. I don't know if you knew, but he's back in Butler, Pennsylvania. That's where they. Uh, that uh, the shot his ear off. <laughs> so what I, I I just wanted to give him credit. I'm just looking at the water here. Isn't that cool? Anyway, I'm start heading back. Uh because you know that takes a lot of courage. And I and I talked about it in a previous video that you know I, I since I broke my neck, I was watching the blacklist before I fell down the stairs in my mom's house and broke my neck. And I still haven't had the courage to watch the blacklist because it just. It just flashes back to that horrible, horrible uh, accident. Anyway, so uh, so I admire Trump. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to go, you know, where such a harrowing uh, thing happened. Of course, Elon Musk is with him. That's a first. Uh, so Elon's all in uh, with uh, Trump, which is good. But I did want to criticize Trump for just a minute. Uh, and he's losing a lot. Of, he might be losing votes to Jill Stein especially. But he came out and said he's all for bombing Iran and uh, going after their nuclear power and uh, that would be a huge mistake huge mistake uh, and uh, I hope he's just saying that so that because you know what happened to JFK JFK went up against the Israeli lobby and he didn't last very long <laughs> so so because uh, you know they they because uh, tr uh, Kennedy was kind of anti-war of course he was also going against the uh, the war machine and the CIA so it, uh, Kennedy made a lot of enemies. Uh, who knows who took him out? One of those three did. The Israelis, the CIA, or uh, or the or the deep, you know, maybe the the military could have been in on it. But uh, so Trump, maybe he's just, you know, beating his chest over uh, Iran so that he doesn't get another <laughs> another assassination attempt before the uh, before the election is over. But at the same time, he's losing 
a lot of uh, libertarian and anti-war uh, votes to Jill Stein because she is obviously against the war in the Middle East and uh, she's certainly not for bombing Iran and, and all the implications there. I mean, I hope Trump understands that if you bomb that in Iran, I mean, there goes the whole Middle East. I mean, oil prices, like I said, will skyrocket to, I mean, $30 a gallon. Come on up here, Elon. He created the first major American car company in generations and his rocket company is... As you can see, I'm, I'm not just MAGA, I'm dark MAGA. You know, the, the, the true test of someone's character is how they behave under fire. And we, we, we had one president who couldn't climb a flight of stairs, and another who was fist pumping after getting shot. <laughs> fight, fight, fight! Blood coming down the face. Now, America is the home of the brave. And uh, I, th I think this, this, this election, I think it's the most important election of our lifetime. This is, this is no ordinary election. Uh, the other side wants to take away your freedom of speech. They want to take away your right to bear arms. They, they, want, to, it, it's, we're, we're, they want to take away your right to vote effectively. You've got 14 states now that, that don't require voter ID. Calif California, where I used to live, um, is just, just passed a law banning voter ID for voting. How, I, I still can't believe that's real. So how are you supposed to have a good, a pr proper election if there's no ID? It's just meaningless. This, this, is, this is a must-win situation. Must win. So I have, I have one, one ask for everyone in the audience, everyone who watches this video, any, any, everyone on the live stream. There's, there's one request. It's very important. Register to vote. Okay? And, and get everyone you know and everyone you don't know, <laughs> drag them to register to vote. There's only two days left to register to vote in Georgia and Arizona, 48 hours. Like, text people now. <laughs> now. Oh, and then make sure they actually do vote. If they don't, this will be the last election. That's my prediction. Nothing's more important. Nothing's more important. I'm quoting from the monologue from about three years ago. This is being set in motion during the final months of the Trump administration, and they say there's no such thing as the deep state. This is one of their guides that actually is linked back to the Department of Energy, going green from the ground up. The first section says it all, out of crisis, opportunity. Keep in mind, this isn't from a congressional committee. This is from an unelected bureaucracy, FEMA, and the Department of Energy. They will rebuild society in whatever image they want. As you scroll through the FEMA website, it looks familiar for people who have been following this stuff. It looks like a near-carbon copy of the United Nations Agenda 2030, the Agenda for Sustainable Development. And the 17 Sustainable Goals are another common uh, carbon copy of what the Davos crew are saying about the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset. It is all the same. And our own government is quietly pushing ahead without your vote, your knowledge, or your consent. What they're saying is, if you actually like or need your high carbon footprint job... If you work in the oil and gas industry, car industry, coal industry, 95% of blue-collar work or literally anything they don't like, too bad. The new U.S. government bureaucratic Great Reset believes that liberty is a liability. Private property is, quote, a limitation. So what could be happening 
in Chimney Rock is FEMA. And I told you this the other day when I quoted the the three goals now of FEMA. I said they're not they're not an emergency management, you know, get in there first and make sure everybody's OK. That's not what they do anymore on their own website are, are the first three goals. Equity is goal number one. Equity, goal and, number one. And they have, as subtitles in, in that, a, div- a diverse workforce. Their okay. number one list of goals. Number one workforce. goal of our emergency management is now equity. Hey, you want to keep voting for more of this, right? I mean, go, go, Kamala. And like, you almost want to say, is this like some subset of FEMA? No, is this, this like. Is- no, you know, is it some? Oh, hey, this is our plan for diversity or something like. No, yeah, no. it is just legitimately their strategic plan. Goal one: equity. One point one is diverse workforce. Then you have a people first approach, and then equitable outcomes. Mm-hmm. Um, again, uh, outcomes. Yeah. So uh, reason reason number one uh, would be these are uh, you know this Appalachia is full of a lot of white people. And the people who are affected are a lot of white hicks. Uh, they've had their they've had their time. Okay, that that could be the thinking um, logically, and without them thinking that's a bad thing because they really truly believe this. Okay, so they're not going in to help because it's not for equity. We got to get those people out because of goal number two. Goal two is c- climate resilience. Mm-hmm. Now, what this means is they need to. Out of crisis, find the opportunity and make places reshape them so they're resilient to climate change. And that can mean you don't live there anymore. Okay. Well, that's apparently what Chris uh, is, is uh, Martinson is saying on his X feed. That apparently is what they told the town council of Chimney Rock. This is all government land. You're not going to rebuild here. That fits goal number two of FEMA. Let me just leave you with one other thing. Could we please play the audio of Kamala Harris yesterday on what the government, what she thinks the government needs to do right away? Go ahead. I wanted to ask you, there's a political ad on TV from a 2019 climate hall. No, it's not uh, and the federal Here. relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. And you can apply now for anyone who's watching this who has been affected. Uh huh. $750. We just sent how many billions? How many billions have gone overseas? How many billions? How many hundreds of millions have we sent over to Ukraine? We are paying for some of their small businesses to stay open. Did you know that? We are paying for their social security in Ukraine. And you get $750? This is your freaking money. You want more of this? Vote Kamala. You want to take care of things, vote Trump. You just want to make sure people are happy. Stop waiting for the government to do it. Help us help them. MercuryOne.org.